Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Anxiety Rx podcast. Today, I would like to talk about my program, your mind body prescription for permanent anxiety healing, otherwise known as MBRX. MBRX is a revolutionary program. It's something that is unique. It's never been out. Nothing like this has really been ever out before. And my purpose for making it was to give people a taste of my work that they could really use to change their lives immediately. Because what I see for most programs is this focus on the cognitive, focus on change your thinking and your anxiety will go away. Well, it just doesn't freaking work that way. It does not work that way. Now, cognitive stuff does help. There's no two ways about that. Cognitive therapy does help you, but it's not going to heal you. And I made MBRX because I want to show you how you heal, not just cope with anxiety, like how you heal from it. And I get a bit passionate about this because I see people spending so much of their money, you know, $100 an hour, $200 an hour on therapists that really aren't really helping them that much. They're helping them maybe cope, they're giving them a bit of connection once a week, but they're not really helping them get to the root of their anxiety in the body. Sure, we can talk about, yeah, you were abused by mom or dad or whatever. We can talk about that. We can understand it. We can chip it out into little place, places that we can understand a little better. But we're not fixing it. We're not really doing anything to fix it. It's been said that insight is the popcorn of psychotherapy. And I think that's true. I think just knowing why something happened gives you some power. But unless you actually go in there and find those underlying programs and deal with them and change them at the level that they're created, that the level of the body and the mind, or the mind, I should say, and the body, nothing really changes. I have so many people that come to me and say, I've been in therapy for 5, 10, 15, 25 years, and this is the first time someone has shown me a way that helps my anxiety that really works and, and empowers me to fix it for myself. And I think that's another issue. I think one of the things about anxiety is we felt like victims as children. And we probably were victimized on some level as children. I'm going to take a breath and just slow down here because I'm getting too, getting too passionate about this. I'm going to slow it down. But I get upset when I see people in therapy who've spent thousands and thousands of dollars for anxiety therapy. And they're not a whole lot better. So the reason I made MBRX... And the reason I wrote the book is to show people that I went through all this therapy. I've been suicidal with anxiety. I've been to the point where, is this my life? Is this really going to be my whole life? Am I going to just live in fear as a victim every single day with little, little spots of happiness here and there? Or am I going to be able to live in a general milieu of peace and calm and self-acceptance and self-reliance and self-love and self-connection and self-compassion with the odd frickin' alarm that goes off. And I can honestly say that in the last few years, I've been able to be more of the latter. Be more present. And when things go off, when the shit hits the fan, I know I can handle it. I'm not going to go off the deep end anymore. I'm not going to go into this place where my body just turns over and over and over. And the, the thoughts, just the constant thoughts, the inescapability of the thoughts, of the worries, is one of the worst things about anxiety. And we don't fix a problem of overthinking, which is a lot of what anxiety is, with more thinking, with more insight, with more understanding from a cognitive level. It doesn't help us heal. It's like when Brene Brown talks about pr- practicing that, that call from the school that says, hey, your, your, chi- your child has been injured, your child's been hurt. The, no matter how many times she, she practices that, it doesn't help her at the time. And I think, not that I'm getting too down on cognitive therapy, which I am a little bit, but cognitive therapy tends to leave you when you need it the most. Cognitive therapy depends on the prefrontal cortex, the ability of your executive function of your mind going, hey, this is the time we need to start using that CBT stuff we learned last week. But the problem with that is when you go into survival mode in your body and your mind, is that it shuts off your prefrontal cortex. And if your prefrontal cortex is the part of you 
that is going to bring you into CBT and show you these methods that help you, if that gets shut off, CBT kind of leaves you when you need it the most. So the reason I created MBRX is to create a different way of looking at anxiety. So it's nine, there's nine components to it. There's nine components to MBRX. The first four videos are about a true understanding of what anxiety truly is. It's really this sense of alarm in your body from old wounds that haven't resolved that's reflecting through your mind. And your mind reads your body in this process called interoception. And your mind just goes nuts. Like it has to make sense of this alarm feeling in the body. So it creates these alarming thoughts, these warnings, what ifs, worst case scenarios. That's just what your mind does. And then you believe those warnings, what ifs, worst case scenarios, and your body gets even more charged by that. So we get into this alarm anxiety cycle that I talk about in the book. And I love the book. I think the book is fantastic. But some people need to go deeper. And that's another reason I created MBRX to give you an actual way of going deeper. Because the second part of the MBRX program has a meditation on how to find the alarm in your body. So rather than going up into your head and creating more worries and creating more thoughts and this problem of excessive thinking, instead of going into your head, which is our automatic reflex to go into our heads and worry, we now settle into our body and find this pain in our body. And it's not like when you find the pain in your body, it's a whole lot better, but at least you're at the fundamental root cause of the problem. So the middle two episodes or segments of MBRX are a meditation on how to find the alarm in your body, how to go into your anxiety, go into your alarm and find it in your body. And then the next one is a yoga nidra, which basically connects your mind and your body and your adult self to your child self. So I'm going to say that again because motorcycle went by. So MBRX is designed to connect your your mind and your body, and your adult self to your child self. Because fundamentally what anxiety is, is a separation of your mind and your body. You go up into your head, you lose sensation in your body, and then you lose that connection with that younger version of you as you get older, as you become an adult. You separate from that child because the adult in you doesn't want to go back and visit that child because the child holds all their pain. So what we have to do to truly heal from anxiety and not just learn how to cope with it is to connect that adult self that we are now with the child self we were back then. To connect our mind and our body so that we have this vessel that has the ability to stay calm, to stay present, to stay relaxed, even in circumstances that would normally tip them over. I hear lots of people saying, I can't fly, I can't travel, I can't go into social engagements, I, I can't do these things because of my anxiety. And really, it's because of your alarm. The anxiety is just the story that your mind makes to make sense of the alarm in your body that was stored there when you were a child. So when I hear people say, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I can't do these things that I want to do, I can't fly, I can't take an airplane, I'm just too nervous, I'm just too upset, I feel really bad because I have been there. I have been in the exact same place. And I did 20, 30 years of therapy. Every possible therapy under the sun, I did. And most of them were cognitive. And until I found things like somatic experiencing and internal family systems and that kind of thing, I didn't really heal. I learned how to cope. But I always felt defective. I always felt like there's something wrong with me. This is going to be me for the rest of my life. I'm going to wake up with an alarm every single day. I'm never going to escape this. This is a life sentence. This is what I hear from so many of the people that I help, help with anxiety. This is a life sentence for me. So I've been there. I know what this is like. So I can use my experience as a, as a neuroscientist and a developmental psychologist to some extent and to, as a medical doctor and try to use that knowledge and go, hey, inside of me, how do I fix this? And I really learned that my anxiety is really the state of alarm in my body. This is where it comes from. So I thought, how do I make a program after the book that really cements these ideas and th this visionary approach to anxiety 
And that's why I created MBRX. There's more than 2,200 people in there in less than four and a half months. Read the testimonials. Like it really works. And I don't want this to come off as some sort of sales call. Like, hey, you should really buy this program. I priced this program at like $100. If I wanted to make money off this, I would have made it like $9.97 or $12.97 or whatever. I want my work to get out to as many people as it possibly can. So that's why I created this work and gave it a very reasonable price. Now my business team wants to raise the price and they probably will raise it in January. I don't really have a lot to do with that. My passion is to get my work out there so you don't have to suffer with anxiety the way I did. Because I know I suffered. I know I came close to ending my life because this was just so unbearable. And I felt like this was going to be me for the rest of my life. So I had a lot of stuff on the website or Instagram saying, is MBRX for me? I have OCD, I have depression, I have a personality disorder. Is MBRX for me? Will it, work? Will it help me? It's like the short answer is yes. Yes, it was designed for anxiety, but really all of these issues, OCD, depression, anxiety, personality disorders, eating disorders, they all come from the same place. They all come from the same childhood wounding. And we never really learn how to deal with them as children. And again, like I said, what we do is we separate from that child. As we get older, that wounded child is still in us. And if we don't go back and find that wounded child, show them they're seen, heard, loved, and protected, we will always be alarmed. That's just the bottom line. That's just what happens. So MBRX will help you regardless of what the underlying emotional dysregulation is because all of these things come from a fundamental disruption of your mind from your body and your adult self from your child self. So you don't have to have anxiety to benefit from MBRX. It is one of those things that just hits, hits a core tenant in all human beings is that internal connection, how we connect to ourselves is how we connect to everybody else. There's a saying that says, your connection with someone else can't be any better than your connection with yourself. Now, it's a bit kitschy, it's a bit you know catchy, but it's true, I think it's really true. I noticed in my relationships, since I've been able to heal my anxiety, I'm so much more connected to everyone. And at points it's vulnerable, and that's the thing. It really is vulnerable. And that's why the last three segments, I know I've skipped a little bit, so just to go into MBRX. So the first four videos are basically understanding anxiety, like where it comes from, how it's there. The middle two videos are finding your alarm and then doing a yoga nidra to connect your adult self to your child self and your mind to your body. The last three videos are about the resistance that you're going to face when healing your anxiety. Because when we're younger, we start assuming that our worries, our hypervigilance is keeping us safe. So we keep doing that into our adulthood. We keep worrying. We keep going to the three worries, the warnings, the what ifs, the worst case scenarios. We keep going to those things because as a child, they appear to work, but you're not a child anymore. And the last three videos in MBRX are all about your resistance, your ego-based resistance to actually getting better, to actually feeling calm, to feel safe, feeling safe. That's a big one. To feel safe, feeling safe. And your ego being hypervigilant and hyperactive is not going to want to let your anxiety go because your ego believes it's keeping you safe. And when your ego believes it's keeping you safe by worrying and being hypervigilant, when you stop that, when I show you how to connect with yourself, when I show you that you can actually be calm, your ego will have a bit of a revolt. And that is probably the biggest obstacle that I face in helping people really heal from anxiety is that their ego pulls them back into worry because their ego believes that their worry kept them safe. And that might have been true when they were a child, but it's not true as you're an adult. It doesn't work anymore. This whole hypervigilance thing, this whole being on edge thing, this whole chronic worrying thing might have worked when you were a child, but it doesn't work anymore. So another thing people ask me is, why, what's the difference between the book and the program? Some people seem to do really well with the book. 
the book's main premise is ABCs. Awareness of your anxiety and alarm. Going into your body. Be his body. And the C is having a compassionate connection to your child. The book and MBRX are very similar in that the underlying principle is exactly the same. MBRX is just a lot more practical. It has meditations you can listen to. It shows you where your anxiety comes from and it shows you the obstacles that you're going to face as you learn to heal from it. Because my goal for you is that you become in charge of your anxiety rather than your anxiety being in charge of you. Once you feel, once you feel empowered, and that's probably the worst thing about anxiety is it totally disempowers you. You're, you're a victim until it decides to leave you, until the alarm just fades, until the alarm just kind of can't, you can't hold that alarm in your body anymore because your body is exhausted. And I want to show you a way that you're in charge, that you actually can learn how to heal yourself. You can learn how to connect with yourself. You can learn how to truly heal from just about any emotional dysregulation by learning how to be compassionate and connected to all parts of yourself, realizing that that child in you that you criticize holds some of the very best parts of you. Now think about that for a second. The child that you have been sort of keeping at bay, pushing away, holds some of the very best parts of you. And if you are separated, if, you, if your adult self and your child self are separated from each other, you're separated from some of the very best parts of yourself. And it's very difficult to become whole and to become calm and be able to be rational and have a regulated nervous system when you are still judging that child that's in you. So I think the best thing that the book and MBRX does is it pulls your adult self and your child self together. Because when we become whole like that, we can truly heal as opposed to just cope Changing your thoughts will help. I am not saying that CBT is not a helpful entity. I'm just saying that CBT and the cognitive stuff won't heal you. MBRX is designed to get into the subcortical structures, the bottom parts of your brain that control your body, that actually regulate your nervous system at a deeper way than just trying to control it with your thoughts. Because those subcortical structures that run your body, that make you have emotions, that make you feel emotions, aren't really that influenced by a change in your thinking. They are influenced, however, by a change in your feeling. And MBRX is designed to change the feeling state in your body. Because when you change the feeling state in your body, your thoughts automatically change. But if you just change the thinking state in your mind, it takes a long time for your body to change, if it ever does. So that's the difference between MBRX and Anxiety RX, the book. Some people learn by reading. Some people learn by listening. Everybody's different. And I always say, get both. Anxiety RX is this wealth of knowledge about how anxiety starts, how it gets propagated, and how it sort of perpetuates itself inside of you. MBRX is much more practical. It's much more designed to get inside to connect your, your adult self with your child self and your mind and your body and show you how you can heal yourself, that you don't need counselors, that you don't need medication so much. And I'm not against medication. I think medication is very helpful for a lot of people. But if you're looking to get off medication, if you're looking to be connected to yourself, be present with yourself, because fundamentally as a child, that's what created this emotional dysregulation in the first place is that you weren't connected to yourself because you had to look after a parent or there was just too much trauma in the household. You weren't able, you didn't have the luxury of secure attachment. You didn't have the luxury of being connected to yourself. But now, as an adult, you have the ability to choose how you're going to live the rest of your life, how to connect with yourself. And the reason I made this program and the reason why it's so popular is it resonates with so many people. And I want to get my work out there as much as I possibly can. That's my motivation. My motivation has never been money. So this is not a sales pitch for MBRX, although it might sound like it. It's basically me, Dr. Russell Kennedy, getting my work into as many lives as possible. Because that's what makes me feel good. 
that's that's why I don't have anxiety so much anymore, as I'm following my own passion. I'm being consistent to that child in me who sees, hears, loves, and protects everyone, who wants to really help everyone. That's why I became a doctor. That's why I do this work with people with anxiety. It's because I really want to show them that you are loved. You are loved. It was something I had to reach for my, find for myself. And there's something I had a tremendous amount of resistance to. And that's one of the reasons why I think I became anxious and why we become anxious in the first place is we block love. And I said this on the Mel Robbins podcast. The reason why we have anxiety is we block love for ourselves. That's the reason why we have anxiety. And the healing, how we heal from anxiety, is we stop blocking love for ourselves. That's how we heal. That's why I wrote the book. And that's why I created the program. And I hope you benefit from it. Because I believe that this is the very best thing for anxiety that anyone has ever come up with anywhere. So I'll see you next time on the Anxiety Rex podcast. And thank you so much for joining me today.